mathematics is, is a wonderful language. It has this almost mystical ability to precisely describe our world and predict it. But how does it really work? How can this slab of meat understand complex mathematics? And how can it produce mathematics? Well, mathematics has a long history. If we go back early in human development, we can see evidence of mathematics as early as 20,000 years back. This is probably the earliest uh, mathematical uh, artifact. It's called the Ishango bone. And it has these markings with interesting properties um, that make us believe that it was used for uh, as some kind of calendar or as a counting help. If we go early into human development instead, we know that children as early uh, as when they're only a few days old can see the difference between set sizes of one versus two or two versus three. And when they're a few months old, they can understand the logic of addition and subtraction. So if you put two dolls into a box, first one, and then you add another, and then you empty the box, they are surprised if there are not two dolls, if there are one instead of three. So mathematics um, and the research about uh, brain mechanisms of mathematics is still ongoing. One of the exciting new developments is that we've discovered a new area in the brain that reacts specifically to numbers. It's been termed uh, the number form area. And this area reacts to uh, numerals, but not to nonsense uh, numerals, not to letters uh, or other uh, foreign numerals. It's uh, down here um, in the uh, occipital part of the cortex. It's closely related or closely located to uh, an other area called the word form area that reacts to letters instead. Here we can see these two areas, uh, the word form area and the number form area. So the word form area connects to part of the brain that has to do with uh, how words sound, their meaning and, and articulation. But the number form area, which is both in the left and the right hemisphere, it cuts past all those language areas and connects up to a region of the brain called the parietal uh, cortex. So we recently mapped the connectivity of these two areas in the entire brain. And here are the connections uh, to the word form area, and up here are the connections to the number form area. So it is a pretty small network. It's the parietal cortex and some areas of the prefrontal cortex. So what is this parietal cortex really doing? We know quite a lot about it, and it has to do with space. So the parietal cortex uh, is important for spatial attention when you guide your attention to the left or to the right or up or down. It's involved in spatial uh, cognition, such as uh, spatial working memory. It's involved in judging uh, approximate numerosity and in arithmetics. So this shows that there is a connection in the brain uh, between mathematics and, and spatial uh, processing. And this fits also with a lot of psychological studies showing a spatial nature of, of mathematics. So by introspection, many of us can have a mental number line where we picture numbers uh, with this according to a spatial organization. And other sets of research suggest that we actually use this number line when we uh, think and, and manipulate numbers. So, for example, we know that uh, you react quicker to things to the left with your left hand and quicker 
to the right uh, with your right hand. And if we judge numbers instead, presented in the middle, we are quicker with the left hand for smaller numbers and quicker with the right hand for larger numbers. So this suggests that we are actually using our mental number line uh, when we're trying to understand the meaning of numbers. So this is pretty basic mathematics. What about advanced mathematics? Do we need the language system there? Or what areas are involved? This is an interesting study by Almalric and Dehen, where they uh, investigated professional mathematicians who solved really uh, difficult or answered really difficult questions. The questions were posed as verbal sentences. But by having a lot of clever uh, control conditions, they could identify the areas necessary to solve problems such as this. And what are the areas? It's the number form area, parietal lobe, and uh, again, some prefrontal cortex. So no language areas, again, even for this type of mathematics. So this seems to fit with what Einstein once said, that the words of the language, as they are written or spoken, do not seem to play any role in my mechanisms of thought. So mathematics is a global language, but it's a language based on space, not words. So how to teach this language? Well, it would make sense to use the connection to space at a very early stage. And one way to do that is using uh, the number line from the very start. So the number line positions the numbers uh, with a specific position. So five has a position where it's a neighbor to four and it's a neighbor to six. So this connects the symbol with a place. And if you draw an arrow from zero there up to five, you get a length also, so that the length of, of this arrow represents the meaning uh, of five. So we, as well as other research teams, have developed um, teaching tools, computerized teaching tools, using the number line to teach early mathematics. And we did this with a um, non-profit foundation uh, called Cognition Matters. I'll demonstrate here briefly what it looks like. In the very first um, uh, exercises, the kids use a tablet. Here they should just find the position for seven or for five, so they drag their finger to find this uh, position. Then we uh, continue uh, after they have identified these positions with addition. And addition is then moving your attention and, and moving your finger to the right to add uh, numbers. And a very similar uh, logic is, of course, to do the subtraction. Uh, it's a movement uh, to the left uh, in space. And you can introduce other concepts with this. For example, um, negative numbers. This is very difficult to do if you're just counting apples. Negative apples is a very difficult thing for, for a six-year-old to understand. Uh, but with a number line it's easy. And you can represent other things such as fractions or uh, decimals uh, using uh, the same um, representation, and spatial representation. We also included um, some um, non-verbal visual-spatial cognition in this training. Uh, we tested uh, this software in randomized controlled trials. We had six-year-olds, about 300 of them, that tried different versions uh, of this program to see if this training transferred also to math tests that did not use a, a number line. And we found that uh, they did improve uh, from this training, which is also in line with, with what other researchers find. In our case, we find, found that the, the group that improved the most uh, was also the group that combined uh, the math training with this spatial, um, visual spatial working memory training. And that's something uh, that we're following up on. So, with the help of this uh, nonprofit foundation, uh, Cognition Matters, 
we could freely distribute this uh, software. It's now being used by 30,000 children every week, which corresponds to roughly 30% of six-year-olds uh, in Sweden. But the beauty of it is that since it does not contain any language, we can use the same software in other countries. So we have projects uh, in Australia, in Mexico, uh, Russia, India, Uruguay, and right now as we speak, there are 80 schools in rural Argentina uh, uh, using uh, this program in a project. So one thing that could make a global change is global education. And the fact that mathematics is a global language should make us very optimistic. Thank you.